we do have a, a, one account of fel uh, felony cruelty to animals, third degree felony. Um, Three animals died in care um, of Halifax Community Society. Uh, 36 of them were dead upon arrival, and 103 had to be euthanized because of their health. We understand that she has a mental health issue, that mental health issues are not a sole excuse, and that she needs to be punished for that kind of behavior. Um, animals died. Over 100 animals died in this particular case, and not, and not a quick, painless death. It was slow and agonizing, as the veterinarian stated in her letter. We're not asking for anything excessive, but we do think that there needs to be a punishment aspect to this particular case, followed by the treatment portion, and we're asking for a long probation so that she can stay on the straight and narrow and continue mental health treatment for as long as necessary. I saw, when, when, when her, her father was a former chief of police at Daytona Beach Shores. When he died, I think it was four or five years ago, I saw a, a change in Stacy. And her mom died last October, and then things really got bad. And to the point to where I didn't really want to stick my nose in the business, but I saw her physical appearance change severely. She got down to like 75 pounds. I finally had to stop her and ask her, Stacy, what is going on? And her direct words were, Ed, depression has got me, and I have to feed those cats before I eat. We knew there were cats up there, but we had no idea there were that many. I, I've never, I, I went up there early in the years when she first moved in, I replaced an air conditioner for her. I, I mean, I was in her place before all the cats, and um, the place was spotless. I mean, it was just like... Trying to move forward a little bit on this, she was uh, out of the property for maybe 10 days, I guess in a hospital or whatever facility, and I got a call from her counselor. And um, her counselor asked if she could come and get her cell phone and her ID. And I said, yes, but I'd like to speak to her on the phone beforehand. And I told her, you know, we have a real big mess up there. I mean, a very big mess. And um, I think you should get over here and clean some of this up. For the next eight days straight, seven days of that, she came in and she worked like a team of men. And I mean, she wasn't, you know, you, you think this is like a, some kind of horror issue or something, but she did not save anything. She rebagged everything, brought it down there, loaded it onto a trailer, and uh, she voluntarily gave me the title to her car and the keys and said here towards restitution as far as, because, you know, it, there was extensive damage over the time. Her current state, as you look at her now, would she be a welcome tenant again? Well, that's like your kid wrecks your car and you say you're not driving the car again. Um, I, I don't know that I can honestly say yes to that, but I can tell you she'd be my friend. I always made sure my animals ate before I did. Sometimes I know it wasn't enough, and I struggled to make sure they ate. I know some of them were sick, but that I just didn't know what to do. I was getting more depressed as the days went by. It just got out of control, and I didn't know what to do anymore. I took an overdose, and I was found by my landlord, Mark Schofield. I was hospitalized and spent almost a month in the psych unit for major depression. I took responsibility when I was discharged and met with Mark. And for restitution, I gave Mark my vehicle, a 2013 Volkswagen Beetle, and I immediately cleaned out the apartment. I will be making restitution with the city of Port Orange. I have been working hard to make things right the best I can. I cannot change what happened. I am devastated and remorseful of what transpired. And I am and I will continue to do everything I can to make the situation better. I now realize what depression does to people and you don't understand it until after it happens to you.